there in the shadow of Mount Rainier is the Douglas World Cruiser. Arrive to prepare for their circumnavigation of the globe. The Douglas World Cruisers arrive at Sandpoint following their test hops from the Douglas Aircraft Company in Santa Monica, California. At the time, Sandpoint Airfield was jointly used by the Army Air Service and the Navy. It was nothing more than a muddy grass field amongst second growth Douglas firs. The Army airmen had to be cautious landing on the soft ground for fear of turning over the planes. Sandpoint worked as the starting location for the westbound world flight because it is considered to be the last airfield on the way to Alaska. And Seattle had a young Boeing company whose employees helped prepare the cruisers for their long journey across the Pacific by replacing the wheels with special water landing pontoons. It was here in Seattle that the planes were christened the Seattle, Chicago, Boston, and New Orleans. The four planes left Sandpoint on April 6, 1924, officially starting their race around the world. On September 28, 1924, nearly 50,000 people came to Sandpoint to witness the historic arrival of the last two planes, the Chicago and New Orleans, which had completed the approximately 27,000 mile journey around the world in five months and 22 days. Boy, were their arms tired. Fold so you could get it in the garage. There was a prototype and then just four. Mm, yeah, there's only five planes built. Two crashed. This is a model of the Douglas World Cruiser, a bomber built between World War I and World War II. This airplane was just recreated by a couple in Seattle, and they're also going to recreate the round-the-world flight this airplane took. They're going to take off next April. This is a clock from the Seattle World Cruiser Project. Here's a compass. This is the map of the round the world route. where the one called Seattle wrecked in Alaska. It's been a huge engine, 12 cylinders. Liberty 12. Check out the 1926 Rickenbacker with four wheel brakes. Awesome. We're at the Museum of Flight, by the way. Wheels are made of wooden spokes. Isn't that cool? There's a rumble seat for grandma. Oh, 
had vinyl tops back then too. Excuse me. 